Joining us now to discuss even further is Peter Brandt, founder of Factor Training. Peter, thank you for joining the conversation. So you're the you know, expert at spotting big trends and predictions in the market. So we would love to hear your analysis of the crypto markets right now. We're in this narrow trading range. We're watching the Fed and the, you know, overall global equity markets. So what's going on in crypto? Well, nothing. I, I mean, that's that's the issue. There's, there's absolutely nothing going on. The market is, uh, yeah wound itself into an extremely tight range, at least in the case of Bitcoin. And, you know, that is what bear markets do. Bear markets exhaust people. Bear markets uh, will eventually uh, will eventually disappoint and uh, eventually lose interest. And, you know, it gets to the point where those who were uh, adamantly bullish on Bitcoin back in uh, 2020 or 2000. 21 earlier 2021 come to the point that i'm not bullish or i'm not bearish i'm just tired uh you, you know i i've had enough of course you know the bitcoin maximalists will not uh, do that but the big bitcoin maximalists they're willing to out outweigh this market you know we go back through the history christine of, of bitcoin what we see in Bitcoin all the way back to the start is whenever Bitcoin has this massive run, you know, 10x, 20x, whatever the case may be, you see these huge bull markets in Bitcoin. They are followed by bear markets uh, that are such that new all time highs are not made uh, uh, for an average of 32 months. I think now you've got an S&P chart up there which I can comment on, but um, in the case of Bitcoin, you know, 32 months. So from, I, I look from the April 2021 highs, I think it's gonna be 32 months before we make a new all time high in Bitcoin. And that really takes us on out until late 2023, maybe even early 2024. So I, I just see Bitcoin as being a boring market for the next year, year and a half that will just continue to uh, chop. That doesn't mean we, we don't chop, we just chop between, let's say 17 and 23, but I think that we will bottom here at some point in time, maybe early next year. But yeah. then I'm not looking for Bitcoin really to become exciting again for another couple of years. So, Peter, you know, I do want to ask you about that chart because looking at it, we're looking at an 18 week moving average um, as sort of a, it seems to be a form of resistance there. And it's obviously getting very, very close to that support at about 19,000 or so. Uh, I mean, what happens if it breaks to the downside? Let's say it goes below 18,000, 17,000 even. Uh, you know, do you see. Uh, is there a, is there a bottom or do you think that it's really going to just accumulate right there, stay there, you, you know, for this long period that you say it will, um, you know, we, what direction do you think it'll go in the near term? I, I, and by near term, I mean, let's say three to six months. Uh, three to six months. Again, I think that we do have support there. There's accumulation of Bitcoin down 18,000 or so level. Uh, it would not surprise me to really take out that support. The interesting thing in Bitcoin is we've never had a bear market that travels below the peak of the previous bull market. Uh, this is the first time. If you look back to Bitcoin all the yeah. way back 12 years, we have big bull markets and we have bear markets and we have bull markets and the next bear market does not go below the peak of the previous bull market. This is uh, this is what we have right now. We're you know we're down. Previous bull market took us to twenty thousand and now we're back down slightly under that. So I think there's good buying down in here, but it would not surprise me to see one more blow off where we take out the 17,000 support and we have the final panic. There is a final, let me out. I really don't care what Bitcoin's gonna do. Uh, I've felt enough pain. I've waited enough time. Uh, I'm just so disappointed. <laughs> I, I don't wanna even think about it. Well, Peter, again. where do you see that bottom? There, there's, there's 13. 13,000. Wow. So there's there's actually uh, there's another chart you 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 brought in, and I think that kind of speaks to it. Uh, that's the gold chart. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, when uh, looking at that, my instinct says that, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it basically says that the, that the, that the commodities markets, particularly the gold market, seems to think that the Fed has credibility when it comes to curbing inflation, that the Fed will succeed in curbing inflation and perhaps precipitate a recession, which is, you know, uh, other than the young traders, the kids out there who are um, thinking that that uh, Santa Claus is going to come early and just uh, reverse course and, and start quantitative easing again for some reason other than, uh, you know, it just seems that that's what they expect. But here we have gold breaking below that support level. Do you think, are, are, is that how you're reading this? Are you seeing this? Is this some sort of statement about Fed credibility with, with that chart? Well, I think it's it's a statement about what the Fed is doing. I mean, gold has really not not done well throughout history when we're in a period of rising rising yields. I mean, gold does not do well uh, when money is tightening, when the Fed is in a selling mood, uh, and and not in a quantitative easing mood. Gold does best when we see uh, interest rates going down. I don't personally see interest rates go down. I, I mean, I look macro from a macro point of view. We're back where we were 1968 to 1982. Wow. Big broad ranges, inflation that's going to be extremely difficult to bleed out of the system. I think the Fed is, I, knows that, that inflation is a killer and they need to, they need to address it. I, I mean, you, you talk about rising rates as a, as a way to uh, as basically a reason why gold isn't going, going to do well. But does that do those rising rates translate to a, a curb of inflation in the sense that is it too little? Is the Fed constantly, uh, you know, trying to play catch up with the inflation rate? You know, right now we have the Fed funds rates, uh, you know, slightly, you know, around four, the target is around four and change. We have inflation at about 8%. Uh, and so that makes the real rate of, uh, of interest at about 4% maybe. Uh, I'm sorry, of inflation uh, rather at 4%. So so does this mean that, um, you know, it, 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 it does this chart and does the price of gold not reflect a view of inflation, but just a view of interest rates? I think I it's, it's a view of interest rates more than it is inflation. I, I've never okay. really viewed gold as a hedge against inflation uh, at, at all. I, I think I think it's it's more of an interest rate sensitive market. But in inflation is a wealth killer, and I think the Fed knows it's a wealth killer. Hey, the Fed blew it. The Fed was way too late, way too little, way yeah. too late. Everybody who was a trader knew that the Fed was blowing it. And so I think the Fed needs to regain its credibility. And to do that, I think the Fed really needs to bring inflation rates back down at least to four. And in order to do that, I think we'll see 75 basis point increase followed by another one. But of course, the free market rates are already there. So um, they're just catching up to what the, wow. you know, the five year note is, 10 year note. They, right. they got it. They got to. They got to le lessen their uh, the the balance sheet. There, they have to. They have to sell that out. They want to get serious on it. But uh, you know, God forbid yeah. they do that. Peter, earlier we were showing the S and P nearby futures chart, and I was wondering if you could see correlations there with the crypto markets and stocks coming up, or what, what's your reading here? You know, the marketplace. Christine gets fixated on these correlations, right? If crude oil goes up, that means this goes down, that means this goes up. If uh, gold does this, that means so and so. You know, I have traded the markets now uh, almost 50 years, covering uh, uh, six different decades. And I've seen every correlation that the market has become fixated on eventually uh, break apart. And so I really do not get myself all bent out of shape over correlations. Ultimately, I think that that Bitcoin is not going to be correlated. Bitcoin is going to be correlated with Bitcoin. Eventually, the, the real value of Bitcoin and the reason it's going to have value is going to separate from what any other market's going to do and Bitcoin is going to advance. And no matter what other market's going to do. So I really am not too concerned about 
Bitcoin doing something because gold's doing something or the stock market's doing something. I think the stock market is in trouble because now investors such as myself can start getting five to six percent yields on on municipal bonds, on double A corporates. And you know, so all of a sudden for investors, the stock market is way too much risk. I, I can get five to six percent of my money. Now I know that doesn't match inflation, so, but it certainly takes away the the risk of having uh, exposure to equities. Yeah, I think that's so you one thing Bitcoin turn, maxis will this, agree with you on there. You don't view this. You don't view this as a, a you know. The, I mean, the the argument that people make as to why they're correlated is basically it's just whether or not it's risk on or risk off that they view crypto. Bitcoin in particular as a signal of risk on, as a risk on asset, as a risk asset. And when the market doesn't want risk, it gets out of it. So you don't see that as the driving underlying third factor, if you will, that that pushes both. I think it has been. I think long term, it's a store of value story. Uh, I, I think for Bitcoin, when we look back at Bitcoin ten years from now, twenty years from now. We will say it. It is the ultimate store of value. It is the measure of store of value, and so uh, I, I think Bitcoin in the next twenty years goes up, or mm -hmm. at least the next ten years goes up. I'm not sure the stock market ten years from now is going to be much different than where it is right now.